Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. On today's show, we'll update you on Ferris State hockey and men's basketball as both get ready for postseason play. And we'll also check in with the Ferris State men's tennis team, uh, which is unbeaten here on the season. We'll start, though, with Bulldog hockey and joined by the head coach of the Bulldogs, Bob Daniels. Coach, welcome uh, to the show. Good to be here, Rob. Thank you. This past weekend, final weekend, uh, regular season action, and uh, a lot on the line as you traveled to Sault Ste. Marie to take on Lake Superior State. Yeah, there was a lot on the line, not only for us, but if, if, you know, for the entire league. But you know, for us, uh, on our behalf, but we had locked up a, a playoff spot, even though it looked like we, we were pretty darn sure we were in. Uh, but we also had a chance at home ice, so we, we it was a lot riding, um, and and um, thought the guys played extremely well. I really did. I thought we had quite a game uh, Friday night and, and played well Saturday as well. This week uh, on the road as you travel to Bowling Green for the first round of the WCHA playoffs, uh, just talk about uh, taking on Bowling Green this weekend. Well, you know, it, it's going to be a tough test, but I like where we're at right now. We're 6-3-1 in our last 10 games. We've got a four-game unbeaten streak going. Um, we're playing our best hockey at the right time of the year. Uh, kind of reminds me a lot of last year where we're, we're, we're starting to hit on all cylinders. You look at our freshman defensemen, and uh, we're, we're playing three consistently, and they're playing like veterans now. They've seen so many minutes and so many valuable minutes. And so, you know, we're optimistic going in. We know we're going to face a very difficult opponent in Bowling Green. You look at our numbers, goals, four goals against power play, penalty kill, very similar. And that's why we were so close in the standing. So, uh, a tough series to call if uh, you're a betting person. We go to the final weekend here of the regular season. Let's go to the highlights of Friday's game at Lake Superior sure. State and uh, a night where you had uh, some great production from your senior class. Boy, did we ever. They they led us and they've been leading us all the way. They've been playing terrific hockey. And, um, you know, overall, the first period, the first five minutes, I thought Lake State had a really good push on us. This is our first shot on net uh, three minutes into the contest and we take a lead. Once we got through the first five minutes, even though the score ended up close at 6-4, I thought we were comfortably in control of the play of the game the entire night. I really liked the way the team played. Gerald Mayhew with that first goal, but then we'll see Lake Superior State come back uh, and answer uh, here with the goal. Yeah, it, it's probably one uh, Justin Campmaster would like to have back. Um, not, you know, it's funny, he made some bigger saves on some more dangerous shots than that. Uh, one of the things I'd like to know too is, uh, you know, you just mentioned Gerald Mayhew scoring. I believe he comes out of the game with two goals and assist. Uh, had a, followed up the next night with an assist, and he ended up uh, leading the conference in, in points this year. He's a leading goal, uh, goal scorer. Um, so terrific. And there's a kind of an unfortunate goal that hit our defenseman's glove and went in. But I was very proud of Gerald Mayhew. I can't remember the last time we had league score in, in uh, conference play. That made it 2-2, two to two, uh, that le second Lake Superior State goal going into the third. And here in the third, we'll see uh, you get a couple of big goals uh, here early on. Well, here's a face-off goal. We're going to return the favor to them uh, the next night, but a, a nice goal to take the lead. Really, here we are on a five on three, and uh, Craig Pepley had a big night with four point scores. Uh, and we go up two. Felt, even though we went into the third 2-2, two, two, I felt very comfortable. Uh, just we were playing that well. Now they'll get one, another one with uh, just under 10 minutes to go to bring it to 4-3. Um, that same goal twice. Uh, but, but nevertheless, uh, you know, here we go. We take the lead here at 5-4 uh, at and an empty net goal. But really, I always felt comfortable the entire game. We were playing that well. Shots on that heavily favored us. And I uh, was really proud of the guys. You get the 6-4 win on Friday night, uh, Saturday night. A little, little different story, a game uh, a little less scoring involved in the Saturday night game. Very interesting, Rob. I, I think that's more of a byproduct of how well both goalies played. It was tremendous scoring chances for both teams. I thought our team, w in the second, we outshot Lake State 23-5, to five and uh, their goaltender, Defile, played really, really well. Otherwise, we could have gone into third with, with quite a lead. As we go to the highlights of Saturday's game, uh, night number two, final night of the regular season, and still a, a chance at home ice going into this uh, final night. Yeah, we had a chance at home ice, and Lake State hadn't secured a playoff spot. Again, it looked like they were going to get one, uh, but they hadn't quite yet secured it until midway through the game, actually, when it looked as though uh, uh, the scores were coming in that they had wrapped up a spot. Um, but it was still a pretty good game. You're going to see the goaltenders really make some, some great saves by both teams. See Lake Superior get the, the goal here late in the first period as uh, they take the one to nothing lead. Very similar to the goal we scored the game before that we saw McDowell get off the face off. Um, in actuality, we won that draw, but it hit the linesman skate and ricocheted at our player. And, uh, you know, I know Pepley felt bad about it, but uh, he, he, he had did what he's supposed to center him and win the draw. 
here Mitch Maloney scores our only goal of the game uh, to tie it at one um, but like I said there was many many chances for both teams to score and, and, and take the lead. You had uh, the shot advantage uh, here in the contest 44 to 28 you mentioned that that big second period. Yeah we played really really well and I thought uh, here's a great chance by Gerald Mayhew he had the, just a tremendous weekend but um, and you'll see our, our goaltender Darren Smith had a really strong night but um, in a game where it ended 1-1, there was certainly a lot of goal-scoring opportunities for both teams. You mentioned Darren Smith uh, had the, the shutout the weekend before. Uh, how nice is it to see him playing extremely well this Boy, time of year? He is he's really coming on, and it, it's funny. We can see it in practice all the time. He's getting better and better. His numbers are great in practice. Here's another good save. And what I liked about him, he's making the saves, and they're clean, not giving up a lot of rebounds. And, and their goaltender did as well. It was just really... Uh, if you were a fan of goaltending, you got to watch a lot of good goaltending on, on Saturday night. Game that goes uh, into overtime, obviously uh, tied one to one uh, officially by the NCAA rules. Uh, went to a second overtime and then eventually the shootout. Then the shootout, and, and it's a one man shootout because at this point we'd already played uh, uh, 60 minutes of uh, regulation hockey, 10 minutes of overtime, 70 minutes, and so did we just do a, a, a one player shootout. Um, we got our turn right after the their guy scored uh, Humits, and uh, we didn't score Gerald Mayhew. I, I thought he had the goalie beat. He just the, the puck rolled off his stick. But at that point, it's just you know it, it made no bearing on the or had no bearing on the standings. And while we still you always want to win, it was not a big deal. Goes down as a tie, and uh, continues our our undefeated streak at four, which I believe is the longest of the season. And as I had mentioned in our last ten, we're six three and one, feeling very good about uh, where we're at right now as a team. Going uh, into the first round of the playoffs at Bowling Green this weekend, best of three series, and had a tight regular season uh, series with Bowling Green. Both teams won two games. Well, you know, it's really interesting. If you look at our road record, it, it's uh, noticeably better than our home record. And then you look at a record against teams that finished in the top four of the standings, and we were 500 against them. So, you know, we feel pretty good. We, we've, we've had success against all the teams that are above us uh, that we'll have to climb through in order to retain the Broadmoor Cup that we won last year. And uh, it, it, it's going to be tough, though. We'll go on the road for best of three weekend one. If we win in advance, the next weekend's best of three uh, again on the road. Uh, possibly we could be at home, but more than likely on the road. And then our finals is a one-game shot at uh, the highest-seeded uh, arena. So, um, you know, we got to work cut out for us, but we're feeling good about where we're at right now. New on-campus format here in the WCHA this year. Uh, talk about that on-campus format, not having that neutral site uh, for the Final Five. Well, I like it. I think that was a great move by our league. And, and while the, the neutral sites were good last year at Van Andel was terrific, we had a tremendous home crowd there for us, even though it's, quote-unquote, a neutral site. Um, I think this is even better. You know, we, we talked as a league and said, why are we taking the biggest games of the year? We play all year long on campus, and, and, our, and the fans get to see that. And the students, like here at our rink, it, it's this year we were supposed to be in St. Paul for the finals. Well, if we get to the finals, we're, none of our students would have a chance to go there. This way, there's a better opportunity for the students to make these games. Um, it, it'll be even a more vibrant atmosphere, and we're rewarding the fans that show up every single week at our arenas throughout our conference. And I think it was a great decision by our commissioner. Well, Coach, uh, best of luck to the Bulldogs as you open postseason play uh, here on the road this weekend. Thank you very much, Rob. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.